Welcome to Norbeck Country Club's Smart Golf Program, brought to you by the Golf Committee and your professional golf staff, and in coordination with the Greens and Grounds Committee. Main topics in the Smart Golf Program, which is approximately 29 minutes. The basic information and expectations, including how to make a tee time, the appropriate dress code, and personal conduct while on the course. Cart use, policies, and changes for 2016, including new cart directional markers. Care of the course, including how to repair divots, rake bunkers, and repair ball marks. Pace of play, including ready golf while on the tee, on the fairway, and on the green. And last, updates to changes to the USGA handicap practices, as well as rule changes for 2016. The primary objective of the Smart Golf Program is to ensure all golf members understand the club's minimum expectations by providing an overview of our club's policies, procedures, and guidelines. The Smart Golf Program is the cornerstone to communicating a clear and consistent message to members, both new and current. A key component of golf at Norbeck is always striving to improve the pace of play by emphasizing ready golf, which will be covered in greater detail later in this presentation. Finally, by increasing each golfer's understanding and appreciation of Norbeck standards and expectations, the individual and collective pride in being the friendliest club around will intensify due to a much more enjoyable golf experience. So, let's learn to play some smart golf. The annual Norbeck Golf Book is a wonderful resource guide for both men and women golfers. These contain everything the golfer needs to know, covering in detail the club's policies, procedures, and rules regarding the dress code, golf carts, push carts, course care, walking the course, and of course, pace of play. Again, this smart golf program you are viewing today only highlights key information. So it is expected that each member read the annual golf book and become familiar with the details. Also covered in great detail are the many events scheduled throughout the year. So please check it out and mark your own calendar for the events you want to participate in. If you do not have this year's version, copies are available in the Pro Shop. To play, it is best to make a tee time. You can always call the Pro Shop, but you always have the entire tee sheet for viewing at any time via the club's website. After logging in, simply select Tee Times from the main banner. Then navigate to the desired date to enter your information or review a previous request. Note that weekend and holiday tee times are assigned via lottery. Submit your request by 6 p.m. on the Tuesday prior. The tee sheet with assigned times will be available for viewing on Wednesday. If needed, click on the Help tab to view four short tutorials. You should give some thought to the dress code before heading to the course. Remember that the code is in effect the entire year and applies to the course, the driving range, the practice putting green, and the short game practice facility. Members are responsible for the parents of their children and guests. Please help them feel comfortable at Norbeck by keeping them informed of the club's code. For the men, traditional golf attire, like you see in golf retailers, is the norm. A collared or mock collared shirt and shorts within three inches of the knee or appropriate slacks. For the women, traditional golf attire also, like you see in golf retailers. This is the norm. A sleeveless shirt with collar, collarless shirt with short sleeves, and shorts, culottes, skirts, or slacks. Some items have been deemed inappropriate attire by the golf committee. These include t-shirts with or without advertisements, halter tops or tank tops, shirts that are untucked, hats or visors turned backwards, blue jeans, jogging shorts, swimsuits, sweatsuits or cutoffs, and obviously bare feet. They're not only inappropriate, but also could lead to injury. Before heading to the course, it's a good idea to call the hotline to hear the recorded message about the day's course conditions. Arrive early enough to check in, register your guest, and warm up before you play. Remember the five minute rule. You are responsible for reporting to the tee at least five minutes before your assigned tee time. If you're late, you forfeit your tee time and will not be allowed to start until directed by the starter. If you need to cancel, be courteous of others wanting to play. Please notify the pro shop as early as possible but definitely no later than one hour prior to your tee time. 
Every golfer's conduct must be consistent with the etiquette of golf and common courtesy. Never forget that one's conduct reflects upon the player, fellow members, and the club. The playability of the course is vital to everyone's experience. Every player must care for and respect the course by paying it backward. Leave each hole in better shape than you experienced it. Fill divots, rake bunkers, repair ball marks, and place trash in receptacles. Abusive behavior will not be tolerated, regardless of the circumstances. One should never become compelled to intentionally damage the course or any equipment, use crude or abusive language, or endanger the safety or well-being of another person. Ultimately, a person's actions or inactions are a matter of choice. Choose wisely because you own your personal conduct. The following USGA video provides a good overview of basic operating practices for motorized carts and personal push carts. Be mindful of where you take your cart and how you operate it. Norbeck is your golf course. Treat it like you own it. Respect it like you own it. Golf carts are provided for golfers' use on many golf courses. Operating golf carts with care and common sense will reduce damage to the turf and keep everyone safe. Avoid rapid starts and stops or sharp turns that can damage the turf and compact the soil. Wet areas or depressions with standing water are especially vulnerable to damage, so steer clear of these places. Saturated soils are more easily compacted and displaced. Respect golf cart operation rules, including keeping your hands and feet inside the cart. Always obey signs and ropes that guide the flow of traffic. They are there to help minimize turf damage that would occur if all traffic congregated in the same area. These guidelines also protect the driver and passengers from potentially serious injury. Moreover, golf carts should not be operated in naturalized tall grass areas where traffic can be especially damaging to the native vegetation and wildlife. Keep golf carts on the designated paths when asked to do so. The request has been made for a good reason related to the health of the turf. Avoid the tendency to park the cart partially off the path. When stopping, Keep all four wheels on the path to avoid unnecessary wear on the turf. If another vehicle approaches, it can pull around you. Neither golf carts nor pole carts should ever be operated on critical play areas such as approaches, collars, and green banks immediately adjacent to putting greens. Pull carts should be directed around greenside bunkers and should never be taken in the narrow gap between the green and surrounding bunker. A reasonable guideline is to park pull carts 15 to 30 feet from the edge of tees or greens. Also, show courtesy to the group behind you by parking near the back of the green in an area that provides the shortest exit on the way to your next hole. Failure to abide by the rules governing cart use may lead to loss of this privilege. Golf cart rules are posted on the rules of the day sign located next to the first tee. If a golfer wishes to drive a cart, he or she must be at least 18 years old or have a valid driver's license. Carts should be operated prudently and cautiously according to all signs and notices on the course. Avoid damage to the cart and course. Be especially careful on hills or wet conditions. New for 2016. For all motorized cart traffic, you will see a single black pole marker just past the tees next to the cart path. This black pole marker designates the earliest point that any carts can leave the path and enter the rough or fairway. Once you pass this black pole marker, you can leave the path at 90 degrees and proceed to your ball. Once you hit, play the hole by following the cart rules dictated for the day. There is a change to cart directional markers short of the green. For 2016, you will no longer see the white signs with green letters directing carts back to the cart path short of the green. 
Instead, you will see a series of colored pole markers. Replacing the old white signs with green letters short of the green will be black pole markers. Unless a red flag holder, the cart must return to the cart path at 90 degrees. Do not cut the corner. Regular carts will not proceed past this point. If you are a red flag holder, you can proceed beyond the black pole markers, but will not go past the red pole markers. Once you get to this point, you will return to the cart path at 90 degrees. Again, do not cut the corner. Scatter means carts are allowed in the fairway, rough, and unrestricted areas on most holes. On par 4s and 5s, carts can leave the cart path after the black pole marker adjacent to the path just past the tee boxes. When leaving the path, do so at 90 degrees and head toward your ball. Continue down the fairway until you reach the next set of black poles short of the green. Do not go beyond these markers any closer to the hole. Return to the cart path at 90 degrees. Do not cut the corner. Carts must remain on the cart paths on all par 3s. Carts must remain on the path on holes number 4 and number 15 and also upon reaching the black pole markers short of the big tree in the middle of the fairway on number 11. 90 degree rule. Carts can leave the cart path after the black pole marker adjacent to the path just past the tee boxes. When leaving the path, do so at 90 degrees and head to a spot where both players can proceed to their balls. Do not continue down the fairway. Carts must return along the same route back to the cart path at 90 degrees. Depending upon the location of the group's balls, this procedure may need to be followed several times during the play of the hole. Do not go beyond the next set of black poles in the fairway short of the green. Do not cut the corner when returning to the cart path. Cart path only. This simply means that course conditions warrant carts staying on the cart path from tee to green for the entire round. If you see standing water on the cart path, please drive through it. Limit the splash by slowing down. If you come across a maintenance vehicle, please remain on the path. He will go around you because his vehicle is designed to minimize damage in adverse conditions. And a reminder, red flag privileges do not apply when carts are restricted to the path. The purpose of the red flag is to accommodate a member with a doctor verified permanent or temporary physical condition that limits the amount of walking. To be eligible, the golfer must submit a doctor's recommendation to the pro shop. This is good for three years. However, this privilege is reviewed annually to determine if the privilege remains warranted. The golfer must sign the red flag provisions agreement. The red flag must be displayed at all times on the golf cart. If two red flag users are in the same group, they must share the same cart. If carts are restricted to paths only, the red flag privilege will not apply. Carts must remain on the cart paths at all teeing areas and all par threes. On hole number four, the cart can scatter down the fairway. On hole number 11, the golfer must abide by the 90 degree rule past the black pole markers by the big tree in the fairway. On hole number 15, the cart must abide by the 90 degree rule. On all other par fours and fives, carts can leave the cart path after the black pole marker adjacent to the path just past the tee boxes. When leaving the path, do so at 90 degrees and head toward your ball. You are free to continue down the fairway until you reach the red pole markers short of the green. Never drive the cart past the red pole markers short of the green. Return to the cart path at 90 degrees. Never drive the carts between the green and green side bunker. Push carts are great for those who like to walk but choose not to carry their own bag. They must remain in the rough around all greens teeing grounds, bunkers, and landscaped areas. Before you make a poor choice and cut across a green or a tee with your push cart in an effort to shorten your walk, understand that you are damaging the course. So take the long way and go around. All push cart users are required to carry a sand seed container for filling divots. Walking the course gives you time to think, to refocus, to calm down, and to just enjoy the moment with nature. All walkers are required to carry a sand and seed bottle for proper care in filling divots. Rest your bag in the rough off of each green and teeing ground. 
Save a few steps and enhance pace of play by placing your bag on the side of the green closest to the next tee. Divots. All players, riders, pushcart users, and walkers are responsible. Nobody is exempt. There has been much discussion over the years as to which divots to fill and not fill. This has led to confusion. Therefore, we have simplified the expectation at Norbeck. See the divot, fill the divot. It doesn't get any easier or clearer than that. This expectation applies to all divots, regardless of on the tee, in the fairway, or in the rough. This is your course. Treat it like an owner, not a renter. Several years ago, the sand and seed mix was blended such that it can be used to fill any divot, regardless of its location. When filling a divot, fill it to a quarter inch depth and then gently smooth it with your foot. This will give the best chance for germination and minimize dulling mower blades. Extra sand and seed mix is available on the tee boxes and at the turn for easy refills. You should do what you can to pay it backward by leaving the fairway in better shape after you played it. Make it a habit to repair your divot plus at least one more. Bunkers. Just like filling divots, you should do what you can to pay it backwards by leaving the bunker in better shape after you played it. Make it a habit to repair at least one other disturbed area in the immediate vicinity from where you played or walked in the bunker. The following USGA video explains the best method for raking a bunker. Remember, at Norbeck, Please place the rake outside the bunker in the manner shown. Most golfers learn early on that they should clean up after playing a stroke from a bunker. But many do not know the correct way to rake the bunker. Leaving footprints and depressions in the bunker can result in a bad lie and take the fun out of the game for players behind you. It also defies good etiquette and the principle of caring for the course. There's more to good bunker etiquette than simply smoothing the surface. And trying to smooth footprints and depressions with your foot or the back of your club accomplishes very little. First, always use a rake to smooth the sand surface. If there are deep depressions made by your feet or the ball, use the back of the rake to fill these in. Then, use the front of the rake to smooth the entire area, covering your footprints as you go, so that when you step out of the bunker, the entire area has been returned to a smooth, even playing surface. When finished with the rake, place it near the bunker in a location that will reduce the chance of it coming into play. The USGA recommends placing the rake outside the bunker and parallel to the line of play, preferably away from the target line between the fairway and the green. This is to reduce the chance of a rake influencing a player's ball in or near a bunker. Some golf courses prefer the rakes be placed in the bunkers to make it easier for maintenance equipment to move around the bunker. If this is the case, place the rake on a flat portion of the bunker near the edge but not the back edge. If a rake is placed on the steep face of the bunker, it can easily result in a ball lodging against the rake on the slope. When the rake is moved, the ball may also move. If it does, the rules of golf require it be replaced. If there is a circumstance in which the ball won't stay where it must be replaced, or anywhere not near the hole, then it must be dropped outside the bunker and the player incurs a penalty stroke. Always enter and exit the bunker on the low side. Climbing in and out of the high sides of bunkers causes major damage to the bunker face and surrounding sod. Taking the time to fix the bunker after you have used it, plus any nearby disruption someone else may have left behind, is showing courtesy to the players behind you. Ball marks. Just like filling divots and raking bunkers, you should do what you can to pay it backwards by leaving the green in better shape after you played it. Make it a habit to repair your ball mark plus at least one more while waiting to putt. A correctly repaired ball mark heals within a few days. A mark carelessly fixed will not heal for weeks. The following USGA video explains and demonstrates the best method for repairing a ball mark on the green.
When it comes to golf course etiquette, one of the first things every golfer learns to do is repair ball marks on the putting green. Doing so helps ensure a smoother and truer putting surface for everyone and helps keep the grass healthy. While no one disputes the need to fix ball marks, opinions vary on the best means of doing so. Arguments are made for using various repair tools. The truth is, ball marks vary in their shape and severity, so there is no one best tool. In fact, virtually any pointed tool will work as long as the proper method of repair is performed. The ultimate goal is to restore a smooth surface and allow the turf to heal quickly. To start, insert a ball mark repair tool, or almost any pointed tool, into the soil behind the rear of the ball mark at about a 45 degree angle, and gently pull the top of the tool toward the center. Continue working around the ball mark, gently pulling the surrounding turf in toward the center until the indentation is filled in. This should be done three or four times. Anything more generally adds injury to the already damaged turf. Use your putter or your foot to gently tamp down the repaired area to make it smooth and level with the rest of the green. If the mark is close to the hole location, use your putter since even spikeless shoes can leave marks on the surface. Avoid prying actions that tear live roots and bring soil to the putting surface. This causes significant damage and greatly slows recovery. Some marks are so severe that the grass is literally torn from the green. In this case, small holes can be covered by carefully stretching the surrounding turf into the void. The damage may still be visible, but the ball roll will be restored and the grass will eventually fill the void. Remember, ball marks are often far away from the point where the ball lies so always check the front of the green for damage. The most courteous players fix their own ball mark and at least one other. The maintenance staff is trained to be courteous and considerate of your leisure time and wants you to enjoy your round as well as the fruits of their labors. Please be considerate of them and their safety while they're doing their jobs to maintain and improve the course for you. Everyone is affected by pace of play, and we can all do the little things to slow it down or speed it up. The standard pace of play at Norbeck is 4 hours and 5 minutes. The standard for a group teeing off within the first hour of any day is 3 hours and 50 minutes. It is the group's responsibility to maintain its position on the course and to keep up with the group ahead regardless of the group behind. Proper etiquette suggests that slower groups invite faster groups to play through. A slower group is one that has fallen behind by at least one full hole. The course marshal and professional staff have the authority to remind any individual or group when they are out of position on the course and to require them to move to their correct position if a problem persists. At Norbeck, Golfers are encouraged to play ready golf. In the simplest of terms, hit your shot when you're ready, even if you're not away. If another player is preparing to hit, do everything you can to prepare for your shot without distracting the other player. Slow play is often the biggest complaint of all golfers, except the ones who play slowly because they don't have to wait. For a foursome to save 18 minutes over 18 holes, all it takes is for each player in the group to save 15 seconds per hole. That's all it takes. So please take note of some of the suggestions on the following slides to see where you can tighten your routines to find those 15 seconds, or maybe even more, per hole. On the tee, play the set of tees that best fits your skill level. Limit yourself to one practice swing. Have an extra ball in your pocket in case of a truly errant shot, especially on those troublesome holes. Watch your ball carefully until it lands and stops rolling. Mark the point. It could be a bush, a tree, a change in color, or size of vegetation. Take more than one club with you if you're unsure of the yardage or wind conditions, especially on par threes. Being prepared will eliminate unnecessary, time-wasting trips back to your cart. On the fairway, don't be preoccupied with who has the honor. 
When you get to your ball, be prepared to hit your shot. If your previous shot was errant and you remember to hit a provisional ball, do not feel compelled to use all five minutes to look for your first ball. Take your lumps and maintain your position relative to the group in front and the expected pace of play. Position your cart so both players can easily proceed to their balls. Park your cart between both balls or drop one person off and then proceed to the other. By doing this, each person in your cart can easily gain more than 15 seconds per shot. Do not drive to one ball, wait for one player to hit, and then drive to the other ball. This is one of the top causes of slow play. Take two or three clubs in the sand seed mix with you when you walk from your cart to your ball. Fix your divot and at least one other along the path to your ball. Watch your ball until it lands and stops rolling, and again, remember to mark it. Help your partners as well. Keep the group in front of you in sight. If you've got a clear hole in front of you, then you are the slow group. On the green, park your cart near the back third of the green in the direction of the next tee. Mark your ball, then fix your ball mark and at least one other while waiting. Line up your putt while others are putting, but don't stand in their line of sight. Use the continuous putting method to hole out. Once it is your turn, putt until you sink it, even if your remaining putt is closer to the hole than someone else's ball. Do not mark it and relinquish your turn. This saves time. However, Remember to follow proper putting protocols in tournament play. The first person to hole out should be responsible for returning the flag stick to the hole when the rest of the group is finished. Clear the green as quickly as possible so the following group can hit on. Record your score on the next tee, not on the green. In summary, Ready Golf demonstrates a love for the game, so play quickly. Everyone understands how difficult the game can be, but you can play quickly and have fun. Be friendly. Treat people and the course the way you want to be treated. Pay it backward. Leave the golf course in at least as good a condition as you found it. On the course, play golf. Save practice for the range, short game practice facility, and the putting green. Learn the rules of the game so you know what you can and cannot do on the teeing ground, the fairway, rough, bunkers, hazards, and the putting green. Most important, relax and have fun. Handicaps. Upon completion of the round, it is the player's responsibility to post the score for the round just completed. You can post in the golf shop using the handicap computer on the counter or with the Maryland State Golf Association at its online site or its mobile phone app. The professional staff can provide you with your Maryland State Golf Association login information. Our designated posting season for the Mid-Atlantic region runs from March the 15th to November the 15th. If you happen to play any other time on a course that is considered in season, such as in Florida, you must post that score. New to 2016. To further support the key system premise of peer review, scores made while playing alone will no longer be acceptable for handicap purposes. This change underscores the importance of providing full and accurate information regarding a player's potential scoring ability and the ability of other players to form a reasonable basis for supporting or disputing a posted score. The Golf Committee tracks rounds played at Norbeck against scores posted on a routine basis. The Golf Committee is also authorized by the USGA to adjust any handicap for a member who fails to post scores. A golfer is entitled to one handicap index. This reflects the true golfing ability of the individual. Remember that golf is a game based on integrity and trust. We play a unique sport in which we act as our own referee or umpire. Know the rules and play by them. The USGA reviews its rules periodically. For 2016, the four most significant changes are Anchoring the club when making a stroke. Modifying the penalty for using an artificial device or equipment. A penalty of submitting an incorrect scorecard. And withdrawal of the rule on ball moving after address. For more information, please contact your professional staff or go to the USGA website. 
Thank you for viewing the Smart Golf program. This is an extremely important program because it ensures all golfers receive a common and consistent message covering standards and minimum expectations. Norback is your club. The examples you set while enjoying your round shape and define Norback's reputation and brand recognition. How you care for the course as demonstrated by your actions of paying it backward with respect to filling divots, raking bunkers, and repairing ball marks, following cart use policies such as knowing where and where not to take a cart, as well as the red flag privilege and what it means, and maintaining the pace of play by the use of ready golf on the tee, in the fairway, and on the green. Your actions or inactions make the difference. The golf committee, greens and grounds committee, and the professional staff thank you for your time and effort to make Norbeck the best place to play golf. If you have any comments or critiques, please contact the golf committee or the professional staff. Again, thank you very much for your time and attention.